it is time for book talk. But first, we've got some information <laughs> to share with you as the rate of reading interest here in Indonesia has improved last year following the release of the 2022 Reading Interest Survey by the National Library of Indonesia. Yes, the National Library of Indonesia collected the data from more than 11,000 uh, correspondents in 102 cities across 34 provinces in Indonesia. And according wow. to the survey, the total level of reading interest in Indonesia reached 63.9 in 2022. This is higher 7.4% from 2021. Not Great so facts. bad. Great facts right there. <laughs> Joke to Carter tops the list as the place with the highest reading interest at 73,020 or 73.21 points. Followed by Gunung Kidul, of course, such a great ambience, right? And Sinuri with 72.46 <laughs> points. And Semarang with 71.33 points. Right, and this data also shows us that on average, Indonesians read for approximately one hour, 37 mm. minutes a day. Mm. This means that Indonesian readers spend more than nine hours reading per week. Yeah, oh, That's actually good. not so bad. I mean, it's like whatever that they're reading, right? I mean, it can be reading what, social media? Is that count? Does, that, yeah, say, is does this, it mean a book? I think or? it means specifically books because it's good. done by the National Library of Indonesia. Uh, All right, good. Oh, that's, <laughs> so good. So that's what good I was to thinking know. too, because I was like, do yeah, articles yeah. count? But yeah. since it's from the library, I'm just assuming <laughs> right. it's books. Yeah. <laughs> and whose book is this one? Okay, we're gonna, uh, we've got some book recommendations yes. like we like to do on Book Talk. And yeah. uh, since we haven't done this in a while, we, I'm sure we have plenty of recommendations. We're gonna start off with mine. This is called The Psychology of Money mm. by Morgan Housel. Mm. So, um, The Psychology of Money, this one, uh, my wife gave me this one. It explores <laughs> how money moves around in an economy, but also how personal biases as well as emotions play a huge role in yes. our financial decisions that mm. we make. Mm. It also delves into what can be done so we can exercise more rational thinking mm. and make better decisions when managing our money. Yeah. Housel himself is an experienced investor and business writer who decided to write this book to provide simple, applicable pieces of advice that he's experienced himself yeah. through the psychology of money. So, I thought my wife got me this like, oh, she wants me to make more money. <laughs> totally, totally not that at all. It's funny because my interpretation is like, honey, manage our money better. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, perhaps that, right? It was something to do with that. But it's totally not. It's about changing our mindset mm -hmm. um, about money itself. So that makes sense about the title. So I want to... Uh, point out a couple of chapters that really kind of struck me. Oh, yes, please. Um, there's a chapter about um, getting wealthy versus staying wealthy. That's mm. two different things. Hang on. Getting, getting wealthy versus so gaining staying your wealth, wealthy. As opposed to you already right. having wealth and maintaining, maintaining it. it. So mm. those are two different mindsets. Mm. There's mm. also a mindset about how we perceive wealth. For example, you open your social media, you see mm. somebody beside a Lamborghini or with the fancy clothes. <laughs> Old thinking, money? Wow, this person is rich. Yes, like, yeah. <laughs> perhaps. Yeah, perhaps. Already. So um, when we see that, mm. we always translate that in our minds as wealth, whereas it's actually the opposite. Yeah. That is money they have spent. So it means right. they are wealthy minus whatever it is you're seeing. So it teaches oh. that real wealth is actually not seen. Right. It's money that's sitting in someone's account or something yes. that's an investment that mm. you don't actually see. Mm -hmm. So for one, that is the biggest kind of revelation for me. Wow. Like, I stop seeing that as wealth now when I see people you know, with wealth, yeah. right? And another thing is the admiration of wealth. For example, yeah. if I'm driving a Lamborghini, people, I might think to myself, like, when people stare at me all the time, which they will, yeah. be like, wow, they're admiring me for my wealth. Whereas it's, it's actually the opposite. When people look at you in your Lamborghini, they're not seeing you in it, but they're actually picturing themselves in it. Right. True? Yeah. Interesting. Right? Like, oh, I love those shoes, but I actually love those shoes on me. I don't really care how they look on you. I never thought okay, of that. Okay, so that's, that's another. Uh, and um, one more thing is that uh, it teaches you about, the, um, about how to maintain your wealth over a long time. Mm -hmm. For example, when was the, uh, the Bla was it Black Monday, that big stock market crash? It was in the 40s, correct? If I'm not mistaken, right. not long after the war. So if you think about it, the, oh, the day, Great Depression, you mean. The, the Great Depression, yeah. rather. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So th if you think about it, we only have a few decades worth of statistics and trends to look mm, for. Right. Mm -hmm. Yet we're making like lifelong decisions on our wealth mm. on based on data that really isn't like that significant. If you look at, you know, all the way back to the 1800s. Mm -hmm. Plus, you're making also a lot of times decisions based on what other people did. For example, yeah. you ever heard this like, hey, you should invest in this stock because it's yeah. gone up. I made, I made this amount of money on it. Right. Well, everyone's financial goals is different. So why are you making your financial decisions based yes. on other people's goals? Right. Yeah. So those are just a few. There's 20 chapters in here, all of them amazing and, uh, and very eye-opening. But those are just a few that I think 
wow, it really changes how I see well. Life changing <laughs> for you? It, it is, because yeah. it does make me make different decisions about, about and it doesn't mean like, oh, I'm going to be stingy with my of money. Course. Yeah. So of course. It's just changing my mindset yeah. about, right. oh, this is how you accumulate real wealth. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's very interesting. All of the things that you said was very insightful. Thank you so much. Well, I actually have a copy that I have not read. Oh, okay. Oh, can I have one, one more Go to on. suggest? Um, um, the, the, the big, like, grand reveal, all of this for me is um, having wealth gives you what you really want. And what mm. to be really, like, rich or wealthy yeah. is having freedom. Think about mm, that for a little yeah. bit. What are we all trying to get in life? It's mm -hmm. actually freedom. I want to retire one day. Right. You know, well, that requires wealth, right? Yeah, so right. actually what you're trying to acquire is freedom through wealth. Right. Gosh, it's and so I think fascinating. this book is very relatable to now, to yeah. our days, right? Yes. We're into social media a lot, and we've seen a lot of people <laughs> post things, whether it's new money, old very money, much. what do you call what it? What is it? Quiet. Flexing? Flexing, flexing yeah. quiet luxury. Yeah, you're flexing you know? money, that you, a lot of money you just right. spent. <laughs> But the things That's that true. you just said and you mentioned, yeah. by the way, like, you know, the Lamborghini thing, yeah, yeah, it yeah. really kind of like, it struck me. Yeah, you know, people sometimes when we see someone in a car, because it's like me. Yeah. Like, I see I someone in a that. vacation, <laughs> yeah. I would want to be there. Right. Right. Of course, I'm like happy yeah, to yeah. Uh, happy for them. But you yeah, don't want to be there. them. But I want to be there. I want to be exactly. there to experience yeah. what they experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There you yeah. go. Revelation right there. Different oh, perspective. Good. It's super yeah. interesting. And I like that uh, thing that you also underlined that money is actually an emotional thing as well. Mm. Yes. You know, it's like, like for example, there's this um, saying, retail therapy. Mm. You know, when someone is not feeling great or feeling wobbly, they usually would go into a shopping spree. Yes. And it's true. We do get a dopamine shot yeah. from it. I feel because good it, when I shop. Yeah. Right? Because it's yeah. something new. You're spending something. But, you know, it's, it's, it's fascinating. It's like the chicken and egg, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's always that question. Yeah. Like, I mean, people would say, you, you know, you don't need all. But uh, what was the, what's the saying? You don't need money to be happy. But, of course, to be happy, you need money. You know, someone yeah. like that, you know? Yeah. It's always that chicken and egg. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. a full uh, happiness is when you can have that freedom to do whatever you want. Freedom yeah. But you need the wealth, right? You yeah. need the money for it. Yeah, yeah. But of course, if you have a lot of money, that's <coughs> you also have happiness. Because mm. with a lot of money, there's also come challenges and it's whatnot. It's Yeah. Yeah, so. And speaking of psychology of money, by the way, if you make more than $75,000 per year, mm -hmm. your happiness does not exceed. So it's like your happiness Correct. level it pretty much. It kind of plateaus. It yes. plateaus. So <laughs> You're it's right. like, right. you know, you know, that's why there's a lot of wealthy people who are unhappy. Mm -hmm. Have you guys seen Succession, by the way? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh, my God. Perfect goodness. example, isn't it? I know, right? Anyway, thank you so much for that, Welcome. Paul. Yes. I have this book. This is a very, this is a new book, actually, that comes from two Harvard professors. I think, well, Robert Waldinger, MD, is definitely a Harvard professor. This is The Good Life, written by these two gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Lessons from the world's longest scientific study of happiness. So, Ooh. in The Good Life, Robert Waldinger challenges the notion that wealth is necessary for a good and happy life. He instead suggests that human happiness is tied to social connections and the quality of relationship with, with one another. Money, yes, of course, it can contribute, but it's the relationships that you have in your life and throughout your life until the day you die. Waldinger emphasizes that having higher quality connections is more important for our well-being than the quantity of connections that we have. So it's the quality of the relationship, not the quantity. Yeah. And he explains that the quality of these connections can directly affect one's overall well-being. I love this book. Mm. I got this book from a library, uh, not a library, a bookstore in Chicago very recently. And I've been so excited about this book because this actually encapsulates an 80-year study of happiness. Mm. So what these guys, uh, what these two did or have been doing to, to, to write this book is that they've been following at least two generations of families. Wow. And, and really measured that happiness. They would go, uh, they would send their researchers to interview mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the respondents over a few decades and then finally conclude that well, what makes you happy is the quality of your relationship mm -hmm. with people. Mm -hmm. and, and me, as an introverted person, uh, I thought that, yes, I'm actually the most happy or contented when I'm all alone in my house. I feel peaceful. There's no noise. But actually, what they say is true. I still need human connection. And that's why sometimes I would end up reading a book in a cafe. Mm -hmm. Because uh, there are other down. people. Mm -hmm. Exactly. There mm -hmm. are other people, even though I'm in my own little zone. I do need that as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a very fascinating uh, book, fascinating study. 
Uh, what are what is a scientific measure of happiness? For example, like oh, what would be what would be like a unit of measurement or some whatever right. it is that they use to base? Oh, this is how happy. So a cup right. of sugar, <laughs> two spoons of cinnamon. It's basically they interview all of these respondents okay. from from the two generations and pose questions such as they even have the samples of the questions. Wow. Um, oh gosh, like this for example. This talks about romantic intimacy, love and sex. Do you feel satisfied with the amount of romantic intimacy in your life? Are you satisfied in your sexual relationships? So they would just measure, uh, yeah, okay. all the different aspects like of our lives. Exactly. Okay. And there's this one interesting story where they followed uh, two young men, young at the time, because this is the first generation, right. one, not the second, not their children, but the, the parents, two young men. Uh, they they both went to they they both I think they both went to Harvard for for their education. One became a successful lawyer, and one had to had to leave school because of a family situation. Mm. So one became a lawyer, obviously wealthy, successful. You mm -hmm. know all the, the 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 indicators that people usually would uh, would say to indicate success, mm. right? And the other one ended up being a teacher, also mm. married, you know, having children. The lawyer also married, having children. But the level of happiness, this teacher is way happier, even though he doesn't make more money yeah. than the lawyer, because right. of the quality of the relationship that he has with his wife, mm -hmm. with his children. Whereas yes. the lawyer guy, I mean, he's been married twice, still unhappy with mm. his marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, it's basically because the quality of the relationship with the wife or the ex-wife was never good. Mm -hmm. So there you go. It, this really makes me reflect how, gosh, you know what? From now on, I'm just going to invest my time really fostering healthy, good, genuine, authentic relationships mm, with right. people around me. Yeah. Either it's my spouse, or either it's my children, or my, my, my family, my siblings, my friends. Yes. Who also can become family, I feel. Yes. You know, family that we were not born into. Yeah. <laughs> you can choose your yeah. Exactly, right? So, yeah. So, this is a very inspirational book, by the way. So. Wow. So, yeah. for me, it's, uh, I think it does ring true, right? Yeah. Retail therapy is great, but it's just so instant. And, it, and the feeling goes away as soon as you get home anyway, right? Yeah. You know, you have that thing already. Yeah. Whereas uh, fostering good relationships to me, and good relationships, I mean, not these high maintenance, I've got to, we've got to get together in groups. No. Like every, it's like real relationships where I really need you, yeah. I can give you a call, even yeah. though we haven't spoken for like a month. Like yes. those are the rare kind of relationships and yeah. friendships that you need to kind of maintain. Yeah. And the way I see it is about quality of life, right? Yeah. Sometimes, and this is, comes with a great data and also research. Yeah. I mean, two generations. 80 years. Or 80, 80 years. years of backed up so science. Exactly. Curious, how old are the authors? <laughs> oh, uh, Waldinger is, I think, 70 something. Oh, so he was good. continuing the study from the previous yeah. generation, right? Yeah. Because, I mean, if he's 70 something and the other guy is, I think, 60 something. Oh, Waldinger is probably almost 80 now. It's like, Real. <laughs> yeah. Lifetime it's finally of that yeah. book, right? Yeah. Finally, at the end, they, you know, they found out the end game. Yeah. And you know, sometimes we always hear kind of stories here and there, and whatnot. People would say, "Oh, man, you need a lot of money to be successful. You have yeah, to be, yeah. you know, some yeah. amount of levelness for you to be successful." Yeah. But now through this, yeah. what is happiness and quality of life? Yeah. It's an index of every, you know, individual. I mean, yeah. you can have the most simplest life, but you can yes. be very happy and fulfilling yeah. too. Yeah, because right? you are surrounded by by love. Yes. By really tight relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that is actually a good book after you read this one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is like a falling to that, right? That's like a, like a full cycle with also Paul's. I mean, you got like life right here, by the way. All right. So my book recommendation, it's called The Book You Wish Your Parents Had Read and yeah. Your Children Will Be Glad That You Did by Philippa Perry. Yes. What is it about? So this book argues that how we raise can affect the way we raise our children, mm. describes opportunities and threats that goes along with child's environment, mm. feelings, bonding, and how we communicate with them in their early years of life. Yes. Now the book explores parenting habits and methods which improve understanding communication. Although there is no one-size-fits-all in child raising, the book is still a worthwhile read, which dwells on the importance of listening mm. and feeling listened to by others. Mm. By the way, uh, I want to add on that description because this is not a parenting book. Yes. Actually, this is a book that you can read, um, you know, maybe you're, you're alone, like you're, you're, you're being single right now, you're happily you know, single, or you're uh, planning to get married, or you're planning to have children, 
whatever, right, in your life right now. This is very important because it does not only lie uh, about parents and children, but how you go back to your inner child, yeah. right? For how you find peace and be content with your inner child. Because we meet with different people every day, even with our parents, with our siblings and whatnot. We have our own baggages. Yes. And what Philippa Perry, she's a, uh, she's a psychotherapist, and this is actually, you know, her her clients that she's been telling the story, of course, disclosed and whatnot, yeah. but she's telling a story that if we cannot find peace and content and try to layer our past, um, you know, past life, it will propel to our present life and also to the future. Yes. So you want to break that cycle, especially yes. if you are a parent or if you're thinking to have children, because we do have baggages that sometimes we don't even know, like we don't even understand that we do have that. But once you, let's say, have a husband, if you have a boyfriend, if you have a, a child, then you realize, oh my God, I have something. Why does this feeling, I felt so anxious. Am I feeling some certain ways? Um, it's usually because of what happened in the past. Yes, So this is very like likely. Book. Yes. <laughs> so I just want to take a particular um, a situation where there's a parent that has one child, mm. both parents work and whatnot. Mm -mm. And for them, because they're too busy, they, have, uh, they live in New York, so they have a babysitter, and they also have a ass house assistant. Wow, expensive. Thought, right. So they thought by giving all of this, yeah. you know, human resources, and on the weekend is always family time. And that's how I am with my husband, too. Yeah. Oh, a weekend, Friday to Sunday, it's a family time with our kids. But is that what the kids really need? Mm. Don't they need our presence from Monday to Friday, which we thought, okay, they're going to school. <laughs> have their assistant or not, they're okay. Mm. And can, I'm going to give it back to them on the weekend. It turns out it's not like that. So the 10-year-old oh. son was trying to kill himself by mm. jumping out from uh, the window of their apartment because he felt like every time that I need my parents, they're never there. Oh, so the backstory is the father came from a family of a very simple family. He wants to provide a, you know, a much grander style of yes. life for the wife and also for the child. To provide. So that's exactly, Good so intention. he's trying, yes. And that's what he's trying to do. He wants to have a better life than what he did. He had a happy life with his parents before, mm. but he wants something that's bigger for his More, family, right. yes. <laughs> but it turns out for a child, all I need is my mom and my dad yeah. to be there when I need a hug, when I need Aww. a kiss, when I at good, uh, you know, uh, bedtime, I need you to read books to me. Yes. That's what the child needs. Yes. So it's a really good book. I get, I, I really do think it's a good book for every individual, yes. wherever you are right now. I have this layer. book. Yeah, you yeah, do, right? Well. And um, I wish that my parents had read this. I wish yeah. that I had read this before I had my kids, but That's nothing great. is too late, I think. And yeah. I learned uh, a lot from this. You know, <laughs> that wonderful. book, and, and I guess to a certain extent ours as well, recommendations are, first of all, no fiction recommendations. <laughs> I noticed. But also, I noticed that from the time like our parents were around, like mm. times change. We know, yeah. we learn mm. more and more about whether it be about psychology, about human connections, mm. whether about, uh, about wealth. It's all these things that are more recent and relevant is the reason why we need to read books like these because yeah. We always say, oh, well, I don't want to turn out like, I don't want to uh, turn out to be like my mom or my yeah, dad. Yeah, yeah, yes. But that's because at that time, for their limited knowledge, yes. this is what, this is how humans behave. Yeah. But knowing what we know now and having stuff like this available to us, yeah. shouldn't we take advantage of it and kind of adapt to more, a better environment yes. and provide more? Yeah. Because you know? obviously what we used to know and we used to think we knew it all yeah. isn't anything like we know right. at all. Yeah. And we have so many outlets right now, like books yeah. and choices and whatnot. Oh my goodness. To kind of like fulfill Oof. yourself. Um, my book is like, it's in my bed, it's in my... <laughs> My table yeah. in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like, good. <laughs> and I noticed that Caroline is actually reading this other book called The Daily Stoic by the yes. Ryan Holiday. That's yes. also a really wonderful Stoic Bible, yes. right? Yes. And Boys, am I learned from you, by the way? Oh. You introduced me to that. <laughs> well, I mean, it's like I try to apply, but you know, it's like oftentimes I fall from my horse and then I just get back up again. There's actually another book I know that. This is a spontaneous one. This is a beautiful book, by the way, guys. Mm -hmm. And speaking of connection, I usually relate connection with love, right? This book is by Bell Hooks. She's an academic, but also she's a philosopher. And unfortunately, she passed away last year. She was oh, only no. 69. Bell Hooks is actually her pen name, all about love, new vision. Really, if you want to understand about love, this book is one of the best books to summarize what love really mm -hmm. is. One of the points that she made that really is stuck with me is the concept of love itself. 
Yeah. When we talk about love, we talk about it as if it's a noun, it's a feeling, it's mm -hmm. an emotion. Okay. But actually, we forget that love is actually an action. Mm -hmm. It's an right. action, right? I mean, it's like, and that really makes me, I mean, it, it, it makes me stop and think, it's like, wow, I can't just like say that I love someone. I need to somewhat do or make actions that make me make that person really feel loved. Mm -hmm. And that's just one of the brilliant points that she made. And she discussed love in many different aspects. So there is touch by love, give love words, childhood love lessons, be true mm -hmm. to love, let love be love in me. That's about self-compassion. There's yeah. also divine love. There is ah, loving communion, sweet love, loving into life and death, redemptive love. It's it's. I haven't finished it, as you can see. I mean, it's like, yeah. just reach the middle. And this is the way I read usually. I would just underline. <laughs> that is a good one, yeah. The important points that I want to learn so that I right. remember. And usually I would read it again and again and again. This is one that I recommended. I got this in Portland in Powell's Books. If mm -hmm. you've been to Portland, one of the biggest mm. and most wonderful bookstores yeah. in Portland. So All About Love by Bell Hooks and nice. New York Times bestseller. Yeah. Good. Definitely want to read that one. Lovely. Yes, yeah, soon. But uh, one question before we end all this. Do you, I mean, there's with high tech and whatnot, now yeah. there's a lot of people reading through Kindles, right? Kindle? Yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not, not so big. Right. I, I was, I yeah, tried I was. It. You did? Okay. Yeah. Not all right. Me. Why, why is it not? Um, I, at first, I was, I was on the opposite. In fact, yeah. um, you guys, when you guys were always reading your, your actual book, <laughs> I would be like, Oh, I can't be carrying that around. Sometimes huh? I go to the gym. I have my tab, my trusty tab with me. I'll right. just download a Kindle app or a reading app. Right. Then what happens? It just doesn't work for me. I don't know why. <laughs> I got stuck on the same chapter for days. And like, right. and it would be, I think what happened was when you're on a device, mm -hmm. there are things that this device can be used for. For example, a notification can come in. Yeah. Right. Or, and you don't have the actual feel of turning the page. Yeah. Like, well, holding this, I know even by the thickness approximately where yeah. I was as yeah. opposed to this where it's like just you have same, right you have to yeah. scroll in. and then as soon as i got the same version of the book an actual book yeah, yeah. i finished it immediately so yes. right. i don't know what it is yeah i have the same feeling okay <laughs> yeah no, i was just you? i was what just about wondering you? because i'm very old school Me too. i mean i've never had kindle or you know the tab mm -hmm. where i read books and whatnot <laughs> but it's just i felt i need to hold it with me yeah uh you know and to just and you know, smelling the, the the papers and just reading all because it's the same. It's black and white on your tab, right? And it's same, uh, yes. same, same. And there's here. even like paper-like kind of um, right. color, uh, color, yes. and and also the feel of it. You can actually yeah. get screensavers yes. that emulate paper, but it's not. Yeah. It's not the same. No. It's just not for me. I mean, right. No, it is not the same. I'm... Oh, it's good for travel. That's what I hear. If you right. want to bring, if you're going to go on a long trip, then download a few books. Then that's great. Right. For a day-to-day -day basis. I tried doing that though, Paul. I mean, it's like that that logic completely makes sense. Yeah. It's like, oh, you just carry this one light thing and you can have 10 books there. But it didn't work. No. I never touched the book. <laughs> you know, so right now, instead, I just bring a couple of books, okay. just two books, and just aim to finish it during right. the trip. Okay. Because yeah. we can't read 10 books anyway. But you, That's you, right. you, you That's like right. your hardcovers, so that must be you some weight in yeah. here. I do. Really? I do want to see you're a hardcover person. I, know I was going to ask, when is this going to be all like <laughs> back? Because that one is, yes, a little bit heavy, but yeah. it's a goodie. I'm not sure, yeah, but no, it's true. I, I My home is just exploding with books right now. Right. I don't know what to do with them, but I love them all. I yeah. can't get rid of them. And not I just because be. for Instagram, by the way, <laughs> it's just been like that. I mean, you've seen a lot of people nowadays are like, Oh, really? Soxable. Yeah, it's, it's a part of the, is that the, the new trend? way. The, the, yeah, it is. It Seriously? Is, it is. I mean, oh, everything how interesting. is. Oh, I hope they're reading extreme. them, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good facts and data is also by numbers by Indonesia, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Jakarta and uh, Samarang <laughs> and Gunung Kidul. Mm -hmm. All right.